Hello, everybody, and welcome to Small Time TV. I'm your host, Francesca Gonzalez. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that we are gathering on stolen land, the land of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations. I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging. I'm very excited tonight to introduce Caden, uh, Caden, <laughs> Hayden Cullinan. I'll go with that. I'll go with that. It's a name change for you. How are you going tonight, Hayden? I'm doing very good. Good. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming in and playing. My pleasure. It's Would lovely you, to be here. Would you like to introduce, introduce your band member? Yeah, uh, my other half. This is uh, Justin Lewis. Hey, Justin. Uh, the beautiful, beautiful man that he is. Very happy to have him here. So you're going to play some songs for us tonight. Are they off your... You've just released a single. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that song? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to play that one first. That one's called The Parts I Hid Away and that came out a week ago today. Uh, so... Congratulations. Thanks. It's scary. It's a little scary. It's, um, I've been putting a fair bit of music out lately, which mm. has felt uh, really good. It's not, I never did that in the past. I always like, it was release, maybe six months to close to maybe a year before I'd put something out again. So now I'm kind of scheduling kind of like an eight week, eight week cycle. Um, Amazing. So it feels good. And yeah, this song, um, The Parts of It Away is, it's about uh, escapism, I guess, and pulling yourself out of uh, feeling a bit, down, I guess, um, and yeah, just enjoying all the little things that make you a happy place. Amazing. Yeah. Before we get into that, I would love to just hear about your journey and how you've gotten here, mm. how many years you've been doing music. Mm, a lot. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about that. Um, well, I probably start, I was studying film at, at uni and I kind of became the token sound guy. In that, I went in thinking, yep, I'm going to direct films and uh, loved that element of it but just found myself becoming obsessed with sound design and um, and that kind of got my head around the production side of things and, and using Pro Tools because we had to use it in school. And then the whole thing shifted and I just found myself making songs instead of doing uh, the film stuff. Um, still doing it, obviously, but uh, way more focused on that. And then... Yeah, I just kind of was recording lots of little things in my bedroom uh, in a share house that I was living in, probably really annoying for my housemates at the time because I was terrible. I've um, never been there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I just kind of put it up online. Uh, this would have been in 2012, I think. So we're coming up 10 years. That's that's scary thought. You know that um, I, I think I saw you at the Corner Hotel yeah. support Corby. Yeah. Like, hey, 2013, yeah. I think it was. So. Yeah. Back then, that's kind of what gave me a bit of a head start there was I jumped on a bunch of, yeah, Corby supports back mm. when he was kind of blowing up and got to tour around with him a fair bit, um, which was great. Um, and yeah, those kind me, of little yeah. opportunities are amazing just to, like, practice and get into mm. that zone and try some things out and try some sounds out and oh yeah. yeah I remember my setup then was this massive PA that I had instead of like this little thing that I use now it's just like I didn't had no idea what I was really doing with trying to do all like looping and all these kind of things back um before it was the thing to do I guess and um it's it's just funny how things have shifted over time and you can really simplify everything into kind of this rather than I used to have this crazy extravagant setup which was kind of unnecessary. Yeah, I'm excited <laughs> to see what you're going to do with this little setup. Yeah. Um, are you self-managed? No, I've been with my with my manager Christine uh, for pretty much the whole time. Since I put out that first song, um, I had a bunch of people kind of reach out and I met up with a few um different um, people that were interested in managing me and, and she was working with Corby at the time um, and um, I just loved her energy and everything about her and we've kind of stuck at it the whole time. She's living now over in Canada but so we're kind of doing the, 
correspondence management long thing. Distance. Yeah, but I quite I quite like it. Mm. But it's um, a, can be quite difficult for meetings and and things yes. like that, time difference and and that. But uh, I really yeah, it's she's great. She's Amazing. Wonder Woman. Yeah. And you self produce or do yeah. you have yeah? Yeah, all self produced. Um, I did the the second record that I did. I got a. Uh, a, a lovely producer, Tim Carr, who's based up in Sydney, to help me out. But I kind of brought all this, all these stems and all these files, and just said, "Let's make something out of this." And we spent a good couple of weeks in three hundred one up in Sydney, and mm. that was kind of the first and one of the only studio experiences I've really had for, for my stuff. Yeah. Is there a particular reason for that? Uh, I like bedrooms. Mm. Um, and then even the studio that I work out of um, now, it, it doesn't feel like a studio. It still feels like a bedroom. Like, yes. Can you? Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I've got the... Yeah, and the I think the parti- like particular styles of music really lean into that kind mm. of raw sound and I definitely think that that fits for you very yeah. well. Yeah. Do you feel like, because i watching a lot of your film clips... Um, they're really beautiful and you've had a lot of collabor- collaboration with dancers. Do you think that your film studies were kind of leaning into that? Do you have a lot of say in your film clips? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I've made the last bunch um, for kind of the EP I put out uh, last year and and then a couple of the songs of this next release that's coming out. I've done a few. Um, just, yeah, I got uh, I got this really cool camera for my for my 30th. Um, everyone kind of pitched in and got me um, this beautiful camera and I just, yeah, have been really wanting to use it. So I just was like, yep, let's make some, let's get back to uni days and make some cool things. So that's been great. Amazing, amazing. Mm. I think we should hear a song. I feel like it's time. Sure. Um, Do you want to say the name of the song again? Yeah. Uh, This first one's called The Parts I Hid Away and we're going to blend it in to a second song. Um, called Oh What A Mess I'm In. Um, it's rare you get, well, it's not rare with my music actually, but <laughs> most bands it's kind of rare to have a song in a pretty similar key. So we thought let's make it one big long nice. jam. Nice. So Take it away. Cool. Let's do it.
You and I deleted. Where's our backup drive? I'm still inconsistent, yet you seem more alive. I guess we really needed it. The distance that we've made, all that's left to offer now are the parts I hid away. The parts I hid away. I'm
people on the other side of the fishbowl, hello. You forget you're in here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so lucky to be so close to you. This is so beautiful. Oh, thanks. Um, and thanks to all the people tuning in. Um, I've got so many questions. Sure. Wow. Um, how did you come or how did you create that sound? How, where are your ins- inspiration from? Mm. Um, it's such a beautiful sound palette that you've created for yourself, where did that come from? I think it still comes from um, from film. Mm. Yeah, big mm. time, like big, big lover of film scores um, and uh, a, a big favourite of mine is Johan Johansson mm. um, and he made some absolutely beautiful scores and his palette is something that I've always been channelling um, in the back of my mind. Um, especially his his use of um, of voice um, in particular, 
Um, so, yeah, I've kind of gone down the road of the orchestral blend into... Uh, and I'm trying to bring it into, in, into, the, into the live experience, um, but it's quite a challenge w- without booking an orchestra. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. You can really feel um, it's so driven by emotion. Um, and seeing as you don't have an orchestra, do you want to just talk us through your setup? Yeah, definitely. Um, so for the keys tonight, uh, I'm, I'm running, it's, uh, it's a thing called Cinematic Soft Piano by Spitfire, which are a beautiful company um, that sample instruments from around the world. Um, uh, and Justin got me onto this company. Uh, we were living together for about three years down the coast on the beach. Cool. And... Um, yeah, Juzzy went down a, a big hole of uh, this guy Christian Henson um, and that put me onto this whole company and I've just spent way too much money on, um, on their products. But it's, 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 it's definitely worth it um, if, you, if you're ever needing something that sounds really real um, and you can't fork out 100 grand to get the local orchestra <laughs> down, <laughs> down to... to um, to come and play. Um, so, yeah, you can control that all by yourself and it's pretty great. Um, yeah, it sounds it, beautiful. Yeah, it's it's really fun. Um, and then this thing up here where my voice gets all a bit weird, that's just a, uh, it's a thing called a TC Helicon Voice Live. Um, yeah, I've, I've had this thing for a long time. I got a new one but I never really use it because it, it's a bit bigger and a bit more intimidating than this little one and I know how to operate this one. So I tend to stick to that for any show that I do or tour. Um, and then, yeah, Juzzy, do you want to talk about your beautiful... So Juzzy's like my dream, my dream, my dream man. He's, he's the best. The sidekick. Yeah, yeah. he's... Um, I might give you this. Hello. <laughs> um, my setup, it's changed so much, but for me this is a really simple... Set up compared to what I normally have. I don't have a big spaceship underneath me, but um, I just I use a volume pedal, this little silver guy, and that goes into a lot of delay and reverb, which kind of creates all the, the whale, whale sounds. Um, and this is the first time we're doing this, but we're running samples from an iPad, which is a bit scary. Cool. But, um, yeah, this guy's controlling the iPad, which is on the floor. Oh, amazing. I didn't see that. Yeah. Yeah. Sneaky iPad. It's nice it's and scary. small. It doesn't always <laughs> work, but that's part of it. Yeah, it's so nice to create such a beautiful sound with so many layers from just mm. two people. Yeah. You're doing a great job. It feels it feels nice. This mm. is kind of the first time we've, we've, we've done it this way. Mm. Um, I think, and I don't know, the last time we maybe played together. We lived together for three years and we yeah. didn't play enough of just us. But It's true. It's weird. We did sometimes. It was nice. Yeah, those lonely nights. <laughs> lockdown. Yeah, lockdown. <laughs> I also um, I love the way that you've written your music as well. Do you have you ever felt the pressure, especially from radio, to kind of create this single? You know, you need a mm. certain tempo, or um, I definitely, as a musician, feel the pressure of that. And I love that you've kind of stayed true to this cinematic sound. Mm. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that pressure and definitely. how you've gone about it? Yeah, um, I've definitely felt that pressure a lot, um, and not so much for for me. But um, I think uh, when you have a team around you or you're building a team around you, they really want to see that uh, uh, that recognition uh from radio and things like that and and yes. i yeah and i've I felt that pressure before but it's i've, I've kind of been like no oh, fuck that like totally not for me um it's and nice it's really when they play it that. it's really hard yeah yeah it yeah. is and then i think when you when you do get out into the big wide world um and you get to play overseas and things like that um you really start to realize that um certain radio stations here in Australia, they don't really, they're, they're just kind of like, they're setting trends and that's great for, for Australian music. It really is. Um, but it, it, it champions a, a certain thing um, and it kind of makes everyone else feel a little bit shit. Um, mm-hmm. So, um, 
yeah, I, I don't really care for it these days, but I certainly have and it certainly weighs on your mind and can bring you down when you uh, see people around you um, making beautiful music, but um, you can hear all, like, some of my friends, like, they're, they're the most beautiful musicians in the world and I just want the world for them and um, sometimes it, it takes a long time. Yes. Yeah, and it's, it's hard to see. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Tough subject. <laughs> yeah, it is a it's a mm. hard thing to go by, but it's really nice that you've stuck to your guns. Yeah, and you've been doing this for such a long time, and um, yeah, it's it's amazing and really inspiring. Um, can you talk about the process of your latest recordings? Because yeah. I know you, you just spoke about being down at the coast. Yeah, um, were you recording down there? And yeah, so um, me and me and Justin. We moved down to a little place on the Mornington Peninsula called Shoreham, which is like a little beach, beach town, um, a couple of years ago. And we had this amazing house, like this, we'll never live in a place like that <laughs> ever again. It was, we were spoiled, <laughs> very spoiled. Um, and we had this separate section to the house, which is, um, it was the previous people that were, that were renting it, um, it was a composer. So when we went and saw this place, there was this, beautiful grand piano in there and we're just like, fuck, this is the one. This is what we need. We need this kind of space. And then we, yeah, we basically we got accepted for the house, don't know how, wow. uh, which is amazing. I think Al, the, the guy who owned it, um, he loved the idea of it being like him living next door to some musos or, <laughs> or something. Um, but He could tell his friends. Yeah. 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 And, yeah, you know. Cool story. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, so, yeah, that, the album that's, that's coming up was all, was all done in there. Uh, we set up a, a little home studio, um, which I was working for other artists in for a little bit until lockdown hit. Um, was that the purpose of moving down there? Well, I needed to get out of the city, yeah. like big time. Mm -hmm. I'd been living like in share houses and, and all this stuff and it just n nothing, you know, I just never, nowhere ever felt like a home quite right and uh, I was a little bit in my head at that at that time um, about some stuff and needed that escape um, and Juzzy was looking for a place at the same time it and um, it was just perfect, perfect timing yeah it was it was really mm. a special time and um, but we no longer we've just moved we've both just moved like back a month and a bit city. ago well, I'm back in the city Just Justin's uh, gone out to Kyneton oh, nice. or that way out in Lauriston that seems to be the place yeah, it's fun. Yeah. yeah, it's great. Yeah, so the album was made there, um, and the process was basically because um, it was at home. It was just when you feel like making music, make music, and when you get in there and you start doing it, you're not feeling anything. You just kind of that's it. Just go back in and cook up a meal or play a video game <laughs> or do whatever you know. Um, it was quite a simple life down there. Or go to the cool. beach. It was yeah. yeah, it was really good. Nice. And you got a whole bunch of players on or you did it yourself? Uh, predominantly myself. I got uh, a really good friend, Jared, um, who did a bunch of drums mm -hmm. for it because uh, I, I can hear it in my head but I can't play it. Yeah. Um, so I got Jared in to do that and Juzzy's done a bunch of guitar throughout it and um, we've made lots of little things that have entered their way in there. I don't, yeah, it's, it's a, just a, it's a weird exploration of... Um, me getting into trying to uh, add all the orchestral things mm. uh, myself. And that's been quite a challenge, getting my head around, oh, a tuba can only play this register and mm. on all those kind of things because the course. software that I'm using to create all this stuff is uh, it's all sampled by real instruments so you're limited to what each instrument can actually do. So it's, um, it's been a good learning curve as well, making this thing. So how long did it take you to make? The album, um, it's, it's uh, quick. quick for you. Yeah, I guess quick for me. Uh, it, it, it. Yeah, I think I, I went through a stint as soon as um, I'd been working on a few ideas and then uh, the, the pandemic took over and then I just had all this time and um, I was just locked kind of myself away and I like pumped out like a rough idea for an album, like a bunch of tracks that was enough for an album but they're all just musical ideas with mm -hmm. no vocal melodies or anything that it was feeling and then it just kind of built, 
bit by bit and songs got put away and other songs came in um, as I was feeling them and, yeah, it's, it's a, it was a weird process, this one, yeah. compared to usual because it's, it's an album, it's not an EP, so it's not just like that song goes with that song and that, that goes there. It was just like I want it to be very conceptual, mm. feel like a beginning, a middle and an end and a journey, so it's quite, quite a challenge. Was there an overarching theme or what was the concept towards the album? Um, yeah, I wanted it to feel like a movie, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> funnily enough. So it kind of, it, yeah, it begins with this just like, there's a couple of in, just instrumental pieces mm -hmm. throughout it um, that kind of guide your emotions, I guess, through it. Um, I'm really excited to share it. It's the yeah. first kind of thing that I've done that I'm like somewhat proud of, <laughs> which feels really nice. Somewhat proud of. Yeah, there's still bits. Like that, I'm like, oh, could could have done that better. Classic. Uh, yeah. It can never be exactly what you want, hey. No. No. Definitely not. No. Um, I'm really interested, just for emerging artists as well. I know that this is a big question, and um, I definitely find asking myself the question of how you actually approach your lifestyle as a musician. Um, as in, like, do you have a part time job? Are you working full time as a musician? Um, how do you make this kind of lifestyle work um, mm. for yourself and for your music? It's a great question. It's a big one. Mm. Um, well, when I, was, when I started, um, I was working in a cafe, mm -hmm. did that. I was at uni, so it was like cafe, uni, cafe, uni, music, fitting it in there. Um, and then I got this job. Um, I was teaching in uh, the Youth Justice Centre in Parkville wow. um, with kids um, that were locked up. Uh, and I was teaching music. So I was in there um, basically, yeah, working with all this youth, um, which was beautiful. And I, I stayed there for about five years. Um, wow. Yeah, it was, I didn't, like, I was only there a couple of days of the week um, and I loved it. Like, I, I would have stayed there if the, if politics and things kind of stayed out of that place. But uh, mm. it's, it's, yeah, the more I learned about... Um, the system, so to speak, uh, the less I agreed with it. Um, and I just loved all these kids, like, and it was just like, it, it you take that stuff home a yes, lot. Of um, so I had to get out of that eventually. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the side of that, while I was at, um, at Parkville doing um, that stuff, I, uh, I was doing a lot of production for a lot of Australian artists. Um, I got into that world and um, and that's what I'm doing now. So I've Great. just started a studio up in St Kilda um, and that's just kind of finished being set up now. So I'll get back into it now that people can move around and stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, it's basically now, um, yeah, it's production and then my music and, and that's it these days, which feels <laughs> like really good. Congratulations. Yeah, it's nice. It's, it's a cool yeah, it's spot to get to, hey. Yeah, see how long it lasts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I reckon it's time to hear another song. Great. Do you want to tell us about this one? Sure. Uh, this song is called Lightning and it's, uh, it's a song that's going to be on the record. Great. Um, uh, it was put out, yeah, actually it came, it was the first, uh, second one that I put out that's going to be on the record. Um, and it's, I kind of, pictured this thing in my head when I was writing this of this, this little kid like on the end of a mountainous cliff like composing lightning wow. with a wand. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was a, yeah, so I was, it was a, it's a visual song I love how me. visual you are. It's great. Yeah, I got into the habit and I've been doing this for a couple of years now uh, but if I'm having a bit of writer's block or I'm um, struggling to find my place in a song, I'll chuck on a, oh, I'll chuck on a, um, sorry, Connor, um, I'll, ch <laughs> I'll, ch I'll chuck on a, um, like a visual piece or something and, and play along to it. And that's a really good sense for getting a pace or getting a, a emotion out. Um, yeah, so. It's a great little tactic. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, this is, a, it's a visual song about um, stuff kind of circling around and feeling like thunder. Amazing. And lightning. I'm excited to hear it. Yeah. Take it away. Cool. Oh, thank you. Oh, 
Connor, you can turn uh, this the vocal processor off for this one. FYI. This life is loud But I invited round I've waited Yeah, I've waited
Thank you, thank you. So beautiful. Thanks. Um, I'm really interested to know um, what you would like to tell your 18-year-old self. And <clears throat> this is a big question for me recently. Um, just, you know, wanting to give advice to younger musicians. Um, but I always think about what I've learnt through the journey and what kind of advice or mm. little takeaways you'd tell Younger people or yourself? <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. Nice. It's good. Um, don't smoke. <laughs> it's addictive. Yes. Um, ciggies are bad. <laughs> um, in terms of music, uh, I, I would say um, don't let people tell you what to do is a, is a big one. Um, Ask for help when you when you um, when you really need it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're struggling on something, don't be afraid of um, co-writing. Don't be afraid yes. of um, sharing the load. Um, that's a big yeah. Big Why do we always one. feel like we have to do it so alone? I think it's that weird. Uh, I, I know. I, I think it, you need to tell yourself that yes. you can do it or, or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, that's how I felt anyway. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's a big one. Um, and, yeah, don't, uh, I mean, I was a very different person when I was 18. I was very, um, I don't know, more fun. <laughs> That's happened. <laughs> I reckon. Um, I guess. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know, like um, gig heaps. Um, yeah. I definitely, I did that a lot when I first started. I was just gig, 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 gig. And um, that came to a halt all of a sudden because there's this weird, in, in, in Australia at least, uh, with, with the booking system, there's this weird hierarchy thing where, mm. like, you, you get an agent and they put you on all these amazing gigs and then if you get out of the limelight a little bit or something like that, then um, the gigs stop as well and they don't know what to do with you here. Um, sure. If that's, if that's a thing, unless you're booking it yourself. Um, so um, if you get gigs, just do them because mm. they don't last forever um, and then you really have to really start working to put things together. Um, sure. Um, and, you know, you become dated. Uh, yeah. I'm certainly feeling I've been doing this almost 10 years. It's weird. Mm. It's a weird thing to think Is about. Is there a way you would have navigated that differently, you know, getting to that spot where you're kind of in this middle realm of being booked? Like you're not huge but you're not at the start of your career and so you kind of get lost Yes, yeah, set, set rules. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't sign the first thing that gets put in front of your face. Amen. Uh, yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. Um, and and I, I guess I didn't really. I mm. had a few different things that came at me and I, I, I just picked the wrong one. I just yeah. got, got given a dud, um, which is fine because um, you learn and you grow. Um, yes. Yeah, but it's fun and it's nice like because, uh, yeah, I guess you get to a point uh, now that I'm a bit older and a bit wiser, uh, like maybe, um, that it just doesn't really matter. It's like it's about the love of music and um, if people aren't into it, that's okay too. Like um, for anyone here tonight that isn't into sad music, um, just consider this like the whiskey or the red wine before you go out <laughs> clubbing or something. Um, nah, it's, they're all it's here a chill. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I can see my sister. <laughs> That's like the only person I can see through, I think. It's all reflective. Um, yeah. Well, thank you so much.
for playing. Oh, pleasure. So thank beautiful. you, friend. And thank and you, Justin, for joining me. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Justin. And thank you for sharing all of your thoughts and your journey with us. It's so lovely My to pleasure. hear. Um, where can we see you? What's what's next? What's coming up? Uh, I have a gig. Uh, I, yeah, I have another gig, <gasps> which is fun. Uh, starting to, I'm starting to book Wrap things again. Good. Yeah, um, good. I've got a gig on the, I think it's, is it the 3rd? 3rd of June at Bar Open. Um, Juzzy's band, Jack the Fox, are playing and Amy Pollock uh, is, is running and what headlining that event. Up. It's going to be great. It's mm-hmm. going to be really good. Um, it's a it's a gig with friends, so I'm like really stoked to to get on the bill there and just kind of test some new songs out and um, see how they're kind of received. Yeah. yeah, well, they're sounding pretty bloody good. Oh, thanks. <laughs> They'll sounding get there. Good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, amazing. And your record, or when's all that coming out? Yeah, uh, the record is coming out in start of September. So not too far away uh, and it's going to be called What It Means to Be Human. Um, and uh, I'm really, yeah, I'm really excited to put that one out and it's going to be the first thing that I hopefully print to some wax. So um, that'll wow, be... it's taken you that long to print to wax. Yeah, yeah. What a big moment. Yeah, You're just save, saving these I just like it. with a 10-year mark. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, CDs were cool for a while yes. and then CDs, they became Frisbees and then um, <laughs> it was the, the whole vinyl thing's coming back and this feels like the first body of work that I've done that um, I feel like I'd like to make a, a little thing that I can um, give to people and they can take that. home and have a physical version of it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it deserves good. to be on wax. Yeah, I think, I think mm-hmm. so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll see. <laughs> Um, yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you, um, everybody. Yeah, for tuning in or for being in the audience <laughs> at Small Time. Um, please like and subscribe Small Time TV on YouTube and um, we've got a lot of gigs coming up in the next few weeks and there's some amazing performances already up there. Um, yeah, thank you again. Thank you, everyone. Um, see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Small Time. Uh, Thank you, everybody, for coming and listening and, yeah.